Hi everyone, thanks for stopping by. I'm Bruce Wartz. Thanks so much for the interest, the subscribing, all the support that you guys are giving this channel. I greatly appreciate it, meeting so many new people. How can we think that we are alone out there in the universe? I have many photos of the constellations and one in particular, the constellation of Lyra. And uh, well, actually it's a fight between Lyra and Orion. Two constellations that I've seen very often and that I've had the chance to examine many celestial objects inside of these const constellations with through my own work, which is just amazing, right? To be able to do it, uh, to develop these yourself, to be able to find your own findings and to uh, go out there anytime you want, right? It's not easy. It's like a hunt, like any hunting game. Uh, you're not always going to get what you want to hunt for. That's that's for sure. Uh, you know, atmospheric disturbance, any and everything comes into consideration. The Great Nebula of Orion. We're talking about a thick, solid planet, guys. This is as thick as Earth, right? Maybe even thicker. Look at all the markings and demarkings all over. And look at the stars out there and suns and nebulae and spiraling galaxies and black holes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not alone. This is the star Almalam. This is a star with a solar system, 30 Ori. Star Almalam, close up. You see, all the, the objects that are around the stars are big vast systems very vast systems so when they talk about a star like even Betelgeuse for example it doesn't mean it's one celestial sphere a star it's I'm starting to believe it's like a code name for several stars uh, this is yeah it's a meteor uh, an angel with wings that's the only thing I can describe it as, as or a, a butterfly or a dragon you know, uh, buzzing by, which is normal. Of course, meteors do um, come out of the nebulae. This was buzzing by the constellation of Orion, just overhead of Betelgeuse, or around very close to Betelgeuse. This, these two massive plumes of clouds that were to the left of Betelgeuse, and they were just incredible. Now you can see here. To the right, we can see the in, we're in the constellation of Orion. We can see the dipper there to the right, and to the left, these uh, nebulae or stars were acting up. And we heard this last year: uh, many dusts and gases, and so many changes were occurring everywhere in our solar system and beyond. This is with the crystal. We're looking at astrophotography of the Milky Way nebulae and the constellations, etc., with. Uh, crystals, pure crystal, magnifying through pure crystal. Andromeda Galaxy, we all hear about it, 2,500,000 light years away. So we're talking about one light year is 6 trillion miles. Try to wrap your head around that, guys. This is seen through a crystal. It's celestial spheres, objects, uh, both known and unknown in the constellation of Andromeda. It's astrophotography magnified through a four inch crystal, pure crystal ball, plus enhanced means, sorry, with light techniques that I usually do. Um, there's no limits. Uh, anything you can do to bring out more detail in stars in, in your uh, photography, just go to town, let yourself go. As long as it's not changing the image. You want to see the image the same way, except better. So that's the ideal of editing, not manipulating, editing. The constellation of Orion, birthing stars. Has anyone ever seen a star giving birth or even had a clue of how stars give birth? All the stars that are out there, guys, possibly even Earth was one before. This is. The um, seen through a crystal, that is a birthing star. They're sitting in pockets of massive thick plumes of gas, they say, but these gases are very thick. So we're talking about a hard surface is what I believe. And we're finding ejecta-like um, corridors on the nebulae, just like on the surface of the moon. Big, massive, massive blue star. Blue means it's hot. 
one of the hottest, and it's powerful, and it's uh, thrusting light uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of kilometers around it into space. Looking through various filtering, we could see all the systems that are around just inside of the nebulae. So when you look at the nebulae and you see this green gas, well, all these objects are inside of there. There's so much going on around the nebulae that we, we can't see from uh, photography, even beautiful photography, because we're not exactly close enough. So when we get in close, well, people look at this and they go, what the heck are we looking at? Who cares? We're looking at the heart of the Orion Nebulae inside all these massive systems. You know, they even say that, look at that, isn't that beautiful? They say there's a black hole inside of uh, the constellation of, of Orion, the Nebulae itself, a possible black hole that's in formation. And of course, they say it just started, meaning that could mean tens of thousands of years that it could have started. but. You know, they're just studying now in science what the heck black holes do and how do they interact with the systems around them. Check it out. See that long line there? Whatever it is, it's pretty symmetrical. And it's a straight towering pipe that goes all the way down inside of the nebulae. Birthing star, that red spot right there, what they say is a birthing star. So, it seems to have a surface, right? It seems thick. The Orion Nebulae, so long me, is as thick as Earth. You could land on it, so long me. These uh, four inch crystals, when you look through them, it shows a lot of the detail. It really doesn't change it. And it, it magnifies an image, I think, anywhere from nine to 10 times larger. So these small, small stars that are perfectly clear, but too small to see, since they're so clear, we can zoom up on them enough for us to see the detail that's around them, right? I mean, every way is good for us to just be able to see more of what's out there. How the heck could we be alone? Where do stars come from, guys? People tell me, you know, it comes from here, it comes from there. They're born inside of the nebulae. That's where stars are all born, so long me, and they fall out of the womb if you want, it's a birthplace. That's where stars are born. And then they'll uh, drop out of, um, you know, with a massive force of energy, will drop out of the nebulae and will go to the nearest star and that, you know, that will be grabbing its orbit and it will go around that star or planet for the rest of its life. Why do they do that? Who knows? You know, spiraling galaxies this is in lyra this is a sun many suns in the constellation of lyra um how could spir spiraling galaxies not collide spiraling galaxies can um smash into each other if you want the celestial objects are so distanced it's vast the universe really is vast guys two spiraling galaxies can run spiral right into each other and not one sphere most often will even touch each other. So can that give you an idea of exactly how much space there is between these objects? Imagine. So when a certain object or asteroid is um, heading towards Earth or something, it's not because it's Earth that's attracting it, right? It's because it was its trajectory is towards us. Uh, towards Earth, and depending on the way Earth is, just on the given right moment that that asteroid is going to go by, it could be the big one. We don't know. You know, it could happen. Um, characterizing a lot of stars and suns in the constellation of Lyra, many objects and, and the lights, like this object here with the massive light. You know what it is, after all? It's a, a double or trinary binary star, I'm not sure, but it's just emanating all this light. Light really screws up your view, you know. When you're looking at these objects, you're saying, well, what the heck is it? This beautiful blinding light most often is hiding exactly what's underneath, eh? Just basically like on the surface of the moon. This is the Orion's belt in the constellation of Orion.
Thanks for subscribing, everyone.